If you've ever struggled with deploying or sharing your applications, I'm here to tell you that you are not alone and this video is for you. I know firsthand how frustrating it is when you spend so much time working on an app and all you want to do is quickly share that with someone, demo it, maybe send it to a teammate or another dev to test out, and you realize that in order for you to do that, they're either going to have to set it up on their computer, which is an absolute nightmare, especially if they're not technical, or you're going to have to go through a whole deployment process, set it up on some kind of URL, and go through these tedious steps that you shouldn't have to do. Now in this video, I'm going to showcase a new platform to you called Acorn, which completely changes how all of that is done and makes it extremely simple to not only share your applications, but have them deployed in a test environment or a production environment if you eventually get to that stage. Let's have a quick look here and I'll show you exactly how you can deploy and share your applications as fast as possible. So this platform is called Acorn and I've teamed up with them for this video. Now, first of all, they're completely free. You do not need to pay to use this. You just need a GitHub account to get started. Now, the way it works is that you can create something known as an Acorn image. Now, this image is essentially the deployment instructions, and this can contain containerized applications, serverless functions, databases, really any type of resources that you want. The idea is you make a simple Acorn file. This will accompany a Docker file in your application, and you can simply push an image to some kind of registry, and then other people are able to access that image and deploy the app with literally one click. You'll see what I mean and I can show you a quick demo here. So at the bottom of Acorn's website, there's a few apps that they have already Acornized or whatever they want to call it. They've created an Acorn essentially for this app. So for example, Minecraft server, click one button and you have a Minecraft server deployed. We also have this massive deck, Dex one, sorry. So I'll click on this, I'm just going to click launch. It'll bring me to this page here that specifies the Acorn image, which is on this registry. And then I can just click on deploy. Now what this will do is deploy a separate instance of this into my Acorn account and give me my own environment where I can mess around with this app. That means I can view the logs, I can view debugging information, there's a lot of DevOps tools and stuff that are inside of Acorn, and I can mess with this, test it, and do whatever I want, and this won't affect the original owner or whatever production version of this is deployed. So that means you can send this to someone who's not technical, and if they break it or they do something you told them not to do, doesn't matter, that's just affecting their deployment in their own Acorn account. So for example, this is deployed already. I can click on this link and it brings me to a fully deployed version of this game. This is its own separate instance, which is just running in my Acorn account. Now I could send you this link and you can mess with it if you want. And I can deploy as many versions of this as I want, literally with one click like you just saw. So with all that said, let me show you how we actually make an Acorn. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but once I create an Acorn account, so just go to the link in the description, you can just log in, you're just going to sign in with your GitHub account. What you'll be brought to is a page that kind of looks like this. Now what I can do is deploy a new Acorn by clicking on deploy, and I can do this from an existing image or from a catalog. So if I already know the image, just put in the image and I can actually deploy this right here in the cloud. And I also have a sandbox environment that I could go into so I can go to playground here and I can mess around and actually create my own Acorn file here if I just want to test something directly in my browser. Now for many of you, you're probably going to want to do this from your IDE and you're going to want to take an existing application and make an Acorn for it so that you can deploy it. So that's the steps that I'm going to show you. Obviously, there's a ton of great documentation and you can have a look at all of that from the link in the description. But let's head over to our IDE here and I'll show you that I have an app right here. I'll quickly run it so you get an idea of what it is and then I'll show you how we would make an Acorn for it and start sharing this with anyone. So I just used Acorn to run this app in development mode but what I'll do is open up the URL here that it created for me and we can quickly have a look at the app. So this is a simple application that I actually built to kind of demo Flask login and log out. This was in a tutorial a while ago but I can go ahead and create an account. So just make an account set a password okay and then it brings me to this page where i can just make some notes so i can say something like hello world now this app uses a postgres database it's got some flask dependencies it's doing some password hashing and stuff and if i wanted to instruct someone how to set this up on their local computer it'd be a little bit of a pain and there'd be many steps where they could go wrong on and not actually get this deployed app so what I can do here is just quickly show you the general steps you'd follow if you wanted to make this into an Acorn that could be deployed by anyone. So you can see I'm in an Acorn file. Now the first thing we would do if we're working in VS Code is we just go here and we'd install the Acorn extension. This will just give us a few commands that we can run and some syntax highlighting for our file. Then we would create a Docker file. 
Now the Docker file is just like any normal Docker file kind of describes how we're actually going to run the container that would run this application. So I specify my Python version working directory. I'm going to install the requirements, copy the necessary files, set some environment variables, etc. Many of you have probably used Docker before and you've seen something like this in the past. Now that we have the Docker file created, we'd be able to make a Docker image and we could run this using Docker, but that doesn't help us with the deployment and connecting things like databases and other instances that we need. So what we do is we go and we create an Acorn file. Now in the Acorn file, we can specify a bunch of different services that we need. In this case, I'm specifying that we need to use Postgres. So I put the image for using Postgres. This comes directly from Acorn IO. Now, of course, they've got a bunch of other services as well. Think of MongoDB, MariaDB, whatever you want. They pretty much have that. And then we specify the containers. So the container we'll have is app. The context is just the local directory here. We're going to be on 8000 HTTP. We're going to use Postgres, some information about dev, and then we can specify some environment variables, which are going to utilize some of the information from our Postgres database. So we have the address, the database name, the username, the password, and these environment variables I can access in my Python code. So I go here to my what is this a knit.py file and you can see that I'm using all of these environment variables to set up the connection to my remote Postgres database. Obviously a million other options that you could specify here. I'm just showing you a really, really quick demo of how you would do this for a flask application, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So once we've set up this Docker file and this acorn file, what we'll need to do is just download the acorn CLI and then we can build an image from this acorn file and we can go ahead and upload that and then allow anyone to use and share it. So to install the CLI, I have some instructions here. It's going to differ depending on your operating system on Mac and Linux. You can use brew. Uh, you can also use curl to do this. And on windows, you can use something called scoop. Now scoop is a command line installer from PowerShell. So if you just type scoop windows install here in the browser, you can pop it up and you can download this. So you can actually just run through these commands, sorry, in PowerShell. So just open up PowerShell. And then you can simply type in those two commands and then scoop should be enabled. Once you have scoop enabled, you can then use that to actually install the CLI. So you simply do scoop install acorn. Once you've got that, now you're good to actually start using the acorn CLI. So the first thing you're going to do is just log in. So type acorn log in. It's going to bring you to the browser where you're going to be prompted to log in. You can see I'm actually already logged in, so I don't need to do anything here. It should just auto log you in if you're logged in on the web. So now that we've logged into Acorn, we can start using some of the commands to run Acorn images. But if we want to actually create our own image, we need to deploy that to some type of registry. So we also just need to log in with that registry. So it could be something like Docker Hub or we could use the GitHub registry. So if I pop up the documentation here, you can see that to log into Docker Hub, we'll have this command and to log into the GitHub container registry, it'll be this one. So obviously you need an account on one of these two sites. I have one on Docker Hub. So what I can do is just copy this, paste it in here, and then I can go through the instructions and log into Docker Hub. Now I've already done that, so I'm not going to run this command. But once we've done that, we're good to start running the commands to actually building this acorn image and then sharing it with whoever we want. I've just zoomed in here to make it a bit easier to read. But what we'll do is we'll go into the root where our acorn file is. So I'm in that directory, the flask web app tutorial, and I'll simply type acorn build dash T and then I'm going to specify the prefix, which is equal to the registry that I want to upload this to. So I believe this is Docker or actually it's index.docker.io slash that I'm going to put my Docker hub username, which is tech with Tim zero. And then I'm going to put whatever I want to call this. So I'll just call this flask web tutorial like that and go ahead and hit enter. Now this is going to start building an acorn image for me using the files that I have here. So the acorn file, Docker file, etc. It's actually already finished. Now that it's done, what I can do is push this to a registry and then I can start using it. I can also run it locally, which I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to say acorn push and then I'm simply just going to take the name that I had. So actually we can go back to this command and change this to be acorn push. And if you've ever used Docker before, you'll notice these commands are super familiar, right? It's pretty much the same thing. You just use acorn as a prefix. So I'm going to go ahead and push that image. We'll give that a second here to upload. And once that is pushed to the registry, we'll be able to actually deploy a version of it using acorn. All right, so this has been pushed. So now what I'm going to do is just copy this URL. I'm going to go over 
to the acorn website i've got like a million tabs open here so let's go over to acorn okay we're gonna go to our name we're gonna go to shared acorns and then what i can do is simply paste in the acorn image like this and i can create a button for this that i could embed on a website i could create a qr code or i can just click the link so if i go ahead and click the link here it will bring me to this where i can now deploy a version so i'm going to click on deploy and by the way this will work for anyone not just the person who created that image so flask web app is being created it's going to provision the postgres server do everything that we need and then once it's finished we can click this link and we'll have the app running all right, so there we go. I just cleaned up some of the other acorns and this is now running and we can go to the URL and we can see that we have our running application. Now, what's interesting is if I go here to my shared acorns, we can actually see stats on how many times these acorns have been deployed per day, per week, per month, per year, etc. So you can see some kind of basic analytics about them and how many people are actually using the images that you've built. Now, what I'll do is I'll actually leave a link in the description and you can click it and it will just deploy this acorn. You guys can mess around with it in your own local environment. Now, last few things to show you here are that we do actually have some tools specifically for developers. So let's say there's some acorn image that you guys actually want to mess with locally. Or maybe you want to run some kind of deployment, but you want to be able to debug that and interact with it from your local machine. Well, we can actually use something called dev mode. So what I did previously is I took that acorn image and I pushed that to a registry. We don't need to do that. We could instead just from our local um, kind of CLI here type acorn dev and then dot. This just means use the local um, kind of acorn file that's in the current directory. And when we do that, it will just start running exactly like it was before, but with our local machine. So it's still going to give us kind of a production endpoint or a deployment endpoint that we can utilize, but we'll be able to see all of the logs here and sync any changes that we make with the application. So you can see that this is actually now running an endpoint that I can connect to, which will load the application for me. So you can see it's loaded up here and I'll be able to view any logs of my application, just like I would if I was running this locally here in my CLI. Now there is potentially some additional configuration you'll need to do when you're running this in dev mode, especially for environment variables and some other stuff like that. But generally speaking, this is a way that you can debug the application, mess with and actually hot reload the deployed website from your local computer. I'll let you guys mess with that more, but there is something called dev mode. Definitely check it out. So now that we've gone through all of that, the last thing I'll mention is that if you do want to move into a production environment, you can do that with Acorn. You may have noticed that some of the apps that we have deployed right now kind of have a time limit, right? Like two hours, eight hours, whatever the time limit is. That's because these are just meant for testing, iterating and sharing your applications, not to be a persistent um, production environment. However, with Acorn, you can do that. Right now, you can actually request to get beta access completely for free to a pro account where you'll have the ability to host applications persistently for free. So make sure you do that from the link in the description if you actually want to have a production environment. But for many of you, this is just the easiest way to share your apps and let people use it in their own isolated environment. Super happy to be teaming up with Acorn for this video. Thank you guys for showing me this awesome technology and letting me share it with all of you. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.